Okay, so our next panelist is Dr. Patrick Moore. Uh, many of you probably have heard that Dr. Patrick Moore was one of the co-founders of Greenpeace. And uh, he was a co-founder back when their mission was, you know, nuclear bombs and things like that, trying to prevent those from being tested in the Pacific and so forth. Well, ever since Dr. Moore became a climate skeptic, Greenpeace erased him from the website and now denies that he was ever a founder, even though there's concrete evidence otherwise. So today he's going to be talking about a new topic. The new topic is that wind power, wind power like uh, offshore wind power, is killing whales by disorienting them and causing them to beach. So without further ado, Dr. Patrick Moore, please come up here and give us your presentation. Thanks, Anthony. Good morning, everyone. Um, I hate to disappoint, but I did talk about the whales and Greenpeace at my plenary session. And uh, I what I'd like to talk about this morning is a campaign I began in 2013 till 2018 to allow golden rice now. And this is a story that uh, is quite sad. This is a scientist at the International Rice Research Institute in the Philippines. There are three other rice institutes in Indonesia, Bangladesh, and India. And this rice was invented by two humanitarian scientists in Europe shortly after the, the, the genetic modification, as they like to call it, was invented, where you can insert genes from one plant into another to change their characteristics. Rice has no beta carotene in it. That's why it's white. But let's start with some general concepts. Genetically modified is a very general term. We are all genetically modified, every single one of us. Identical twins, if they're the same sex, are identically genetic. But unless they each have children with the same person, which doesn't happen very often, everyone is genetically modified from their parents. No one is identical to their parents. So to use this term genetically modified in a negative fashion is ridiculous. Conventional breeding is a form of genetic modification where you simply take, choose two, two seeds, two plants from the same species and cross them. That's genetic modification because the offspring of those two plants will not be identical to the parents either. They will be modified. Mutation breeding has been going on for over a hundred years using radiation and chemicals to mutate plants on purpose and see if anything useful comes out when you plant the seeds. You know, 99.9% .9 of them are no good because they've been damaged genetically to such an extent, but sometimes the chemical or the radiation confers a desirable trait on that seed. That's been going on for a long, long time. And, and the people who are against genetic modification, as they like to call it, are not against this. There's lots of organic, so-called organic crops that are made with chemical and nuclear radiation. Marker-assisted breeding. This is just like crossbreeding normal agriculture, except now we can see the genes directly, and we can figure out which ones to cross with each other much more specifically in order to get a new desirable trait. Recombinant DNA biotechnology is the correct term for inserting genes from one plant or animal into another. This is what golden rice is, one of these. Here's the organizations that say GM crops are as safe or safer than conventionally bred crops because they are required to go through much more rigorous testing than regular crops. This is very different from the climate change issue in that a lot of established associations in science 
are going along with the climate change hoax. But with GM, it's different because here you're dealing with, this is, this is the global area of biotech crops up to 2013. And, and the green countries are the only ones that, are, that allow any of them to be planted. And in most cases, it's very few varieties that have been permitted. We could have been way ahead of where we are now if GM had been accepted as, a, as an acceptable breeding method. Because it's not as if we're taking genes from some plant on Mars. And, and soon we'll get into the golden rice here. Um, when, when the Philippines adopted GM corn, Greenpeace said, dying children and cancer clusters. This is the kind of propaganda. We tried. I, I, we, we, we went to Europe and went, demonstrated in front of Greenpeace offices and went to Asia and spoke to all the press there because that's where the biggest problem is, Asia, Africa. And uh, in, in India, they adopted genetic cotton, which, in, which radically increased productivity because the boll weevil was not able to eat half the cotton. And here you have the difference between a GM potato and a regular potato when it comes to insect resistance. This is vitamin A deficiency in preschool children. This was the point of this whole campaign. The reason golden rice was invented was because so many poor people in the tropics in particular depend on rice as their staple energy food. There's no beta carotene in rice, but there is in corn, there is in yams, there is in carrots, of course. And beta carotene was found by the, by the United Nations health people not only to be necessary for eyesight, but also for the immune system. This wasn't known until about 40 years ago. And that's why children die from diabetes, malaria, dengue, and other diseases that they would normally survive from if their immune system was functioning properly. Every year, between one and two million children die from vitamin A deficiency because beta carotene is what we make vitamin A with. We don't make beta carotene. We have to take it in from a plant and turn it into a, a very important micronutrient. This woman is going blind because of vitamin A deficiency but she's managed to live to this age, unlike the one to two million other people. They don't keep very good stats on really poor children dying in remote villages. This is Dr. Ingo Potricus in the middle and on the right, uh, the, his partner, Professor Beyer, and two people from uh, the, the Asia who helped put this thing together. Here's golden rice. Under the agreement, any farmer in a developing country earning less than 10,000 a year will not pay a fee for golden rice and will be able to save and replant the seed. That was the plan. Here's Time Magazine in 1999 announcing the golden rice. Here's all the people who support the golden rice development. It's been planted in research farms for a long time. Here's one in, this is the one in the Philippines at the International Rice Research Institute. This is Greenpeace using death symbols around golden rice. This is long after I left Greenpeace. Here they say farmers destroyed the golden rice fields in the research institute founded by international scientists. These are radical leftists who were bussed in by Greenpeace to destroy the golden rice. Because Greenpeace was on site, they put the press release right away saying Filipino farmers have destroyed the golden rice because they don't believe in GMOs. Here's a study of clinical nutrition. Beta carotene in golden rice is as good as beta carotene in oil at providing vitamin A to children. This was a study done with parental approval with children in China to show that golden rice uh, improved their beta carotene intake. And 
the, 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 the Chinese scientist who was working in the United States who did this was uh, banned from her association. Uh, three top uh, people in the bureaucracy in China were fired, and this study was buried. And they say they've never done any testing. This was done. This is Greenpeace genetically engineered golden rice fake remedy for vitamin A deficiency. Greenpeace. This is why I came to hate them. Here is the cotton production in India. And here is Vandana Shiva, one of the ugliest people on this planet, saying farmers should be free to grow GMOs which can contaminate organic farms is like saying rapists should be, have freedom to rape. She says 270,000 Indian farmers have committed suicide since Monsanto entered the Indian seed market, she said. It's genocide. Here's the suicide rate in the world. The United States has a higher suicide rate than many other countries, and it's right about the same as India. In fact, it's slightly lower. They're, they're both shown as in Australia. India's suicide rate is not high when you consider the number of people there are there. This is the kind of propaganda that nasty people put out. It's a moral obligation of human beings to actively plan and carry out the killing of those engaged in heinous crimes against humanity. There is real CO2. There is real radiation. They are invisible, but they are real. But the thing in genetically modified crops that is dangerous does not exist. If it had a name, it would be useful. But the, thing, the bad thing doesn't even have a name. It is fake and phony and non-existent. There's nothing bad in GMOs. And yet they've mounted multi-billion dollar fundraising campaigns and stopped at least three quarters of the world's population from benefiting from this, especially in the developing countries. That it is they who are committing crimes against humanity. And it simply, they've simply managed to stifle knowledge of this thing all through these years, since 1999. 40 grams of golden rice a day is all that is needed to prevent blindness and death in children. That much. Here we are beginning the campaign against Greenpeace at the dock in Vancouver. That's my, my, son, my, my nephew and my son holding up the sign. My brother, with, my late brother with his cap on back there. This was a family effort from the beginning. As my brother and my wife and I sat around our country home table on Vancouver Island, we read of Greenpeace putting out this media release saying that farmers had destroyed the golden rice and we got to the bottom of it pretty quick. And we decided right there at the kitchen table when we read that on the computer that we were going to have a campaign to do something about this. And we worked for three and a half years traveling to eight different countries in Europe and five different countries in Asia. We reached 30 million people with a positive message. Lots of scientists were working on GMOs, but nobody was campaigning for them, and thousands of people were campaigning against them. Here's, I have to wind this up now, I know there's a lot more to this story, but Filipinos are now, Philippines is the only country now where the International Rice Research Institute, the only country in the area that needs it that has adopted golden rice. Bangladesh has been trying for years. They, they had an agriculture secretary uh, who was in favor of it, and, but she just couldn't get past the environment ministry. Greenpeace influences the environment ministry in all these countries to make sure golden rice never gets introduced. Even after all this time of knowing there's nothing wrong with it and the bad thing is not in existence. Thank you for listening. I hope you uh, learn more about this.
Thank you, Dr. Moore. Now, obviously, I was misinformed as to the title of your topic. I thought it was going to be about whales, but it was about golden rice, which was tremendously interesting. You know, I think that the resistance of the left against golden rice is one of the most ridiculous things they've ever come up with. I mean, the bottom line is this. When you eat something, no matter how the DNA is arranged, whether it's corn or lettuce or beef or potatoes or whatever, it all gets broken down on your gut into components. It doesn't matter how it's arranged, and yet they create you know, labels like frankenfood for this sort of thing. Well, my label for those kind of folks is ecochondriacs.